Hello YouTube and welcome back to my Visual Studio tutorial talking about Visual C Sharp, so let's just get started. So last episode we created this, this is a joke machine where you can tell jokes, so what did the farmer say when he lost his tractor? Where's my tractor? And that's what we made in the last episode. So let's start a new project. So new project and again we want Windows Form App.NET Framework and we want to call this clicking game so it's going to create an entirely new project now so this is our new project so again we need to set up our form so 640 by 480 that's the standard resolution so step one create our project step two design a GUI so let's create a label so let's create a label, label, there we are, so we want our title, we want a uh, text box, so this will be how many clicks you get, because this is going to be a clicking game, we want two buttons, uno, due, and then, so that's our actual gameplay buttons, and then finally we want start game and close, so this will be our beautiful game. So label one is just our label or title label. Label title, that's what we call it. Um, clicking game. Actually, no, we want to call we want to label this as number of clicks to let the user know what the hell they're doing. So let's go format, center and form horizontally. This needs to do exactly the same thing. Oh center and form horizontally. So this text box, text box number of clicks. And we want this to not be, and as we did in the last episode, we don't want the user to be able to change this. So read only and not enabled. Next, we want our two buttons. So I'm gonna place one there and one there. So button, click one, and button, click two. So but they both say click me, but this first one, so what the user will have to do is the user have to click on that one, click on that one, and keep going, and just count this number up. So what we want to do is this one needs to be disabled by default, so not be clickable. So enabled, false. And finally we can have our two buttons like that. So button 3 will be button start. Actually if that's our start button I just thought. So if that's our start button that one should also be disabled. So enabled, false. So both false. And then finally, this button at the bottom is our button exit. So this needs to be quite small. So we want the game window about that size. So 300 by 250 and we can center that. So that's our beautiful game so if we so now that we've designed our GUI you can see none of the buttons obviously work you can't click the buttons so next we need a timer oh a fancy fancy timer so an interval is in milliseconds, so a thousand is one second. So when we click start game, we want, when we click start game, we want the timer, so timer one, to start. So that means it's going to start ticking up. Next up, 
we want to enable this button. So this is our click one. So button one, or well button click one dot enabled equals true. So let's try that. So if we click start game, you see that one enables itself. So fancy. So if we double click our click me button, so click one, so when the user clicks that, it, that one needs to enable and this one needs to disable. So we want to go button click two dot enabled equals true. So we want to enable the other one first and then disable the one that is being clicked. And do exactly the same for the other one, except for we need to swap the button names around. One, two, one, two, one, two. There we are. So now we need a variable. So now we need a counter. So inside of partial class form one, let's create an integer that's uh, player score. And let's add to zero. Fancy, very fancy. So at the start of our click function, we want to go player score plus equals one. And do exactly the same on that. So if we click start, you'll see we can't actually see anything because we haven't set this uh, text box to uh, actually display it. So then let's go text box number of clicks. Text box number of clicks dot text equals. So we want to do text box number of clicks equals text. And let's go player score dot to string. And that's a function, so we put our brackets like that. And we do that again after that. So you see start game one, two, three, four, five, six. However, that game goes on infinitely, and that's not very fun. So we want to go double click on our timer this time. So this is every single time it ticks. So before we set our interval to 1000, which was our um is which is one second. So we set our interval. So we set our interval to 1000, which is one second. So we need to create another variable. Let's just go integer seconds equals zero. So every single time it ticks, we need to go seconds dot no, seconds plus equals one. So we add one second on. If seconds is equal to 30, so we've added one and it equals to 30, so that means that it, it needs to stop we want to go yeah we want to go button click one dot enabled equals false so we want to disable both buttons so do exactly the same button click two enabled equals false so we disable both buttons we then need to go timer one dot enabled equals false So if we go new game one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we just need to wait until it gets to 30 seconds. So as you can see, <laughs> luckily we ended on 69 quite clearly. Um, both buttons disable themselves, the timer stops in the background so it's more efficient rather than just keeping the timer continually going on. But if we click start, you see it continues where it is. So we need to reset our number between games. You'll have also noticed that we never actually reset seconds. So if there's a bug somewhere where seconds become 31 or higher, then it will never actually reset. It will never stop the game. So let's change this. If seconds is bigger than 29, meaning that if it's 30 or higher, then it will stop the game. So next, when we click our start button, let's at the start here, we want to go seconds equals zero and score so player score equals zero so we start from the start so let's play start actually let's move this down to only nine seconds so it's only 10 seconds it gives you one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen it's not actually seconds what I was doing though, was it? So I got 17 in about nine or well, 10 seconds. And if I click that again, 
Okay, so it does reset, but we didn't reset the. Uh, we didn't reset the text either. So let's do that. So we really, since we set it to zero, we could just leave it at that string. Finally, we can exit the game. So we go. So in our exit function, we can go application dot exit. And that's a function, so again, let's do that. So that will close the game. This will actually let us play the game. So 24, start again. So that's our basic game. So what we should do now, before we start extending it, before we start extending our, extending our application, let's comment it. So at the start, this is our reset game function. This is our game start function. All of this is pretty self-explanatory, but we'll do it anyway. So click button left. button right and then this goes add to timer reset game and then exit application so that's how we comment code by either doing a double slash like that or we can go slash star and you end that with a, another star slash so in here, you can have multi-line, so you can go, ah, and that will allow you to do multi-line comments. So how can we extend this? We can again make the form look all pretty, so that's an option. Um, you can, so the form looks pretty ugly currently, so you could do that, but if you double click it, you see it goes full screen. So something you'd want to change is, um, if we go down here, where is it? I'm blind. I'm a blind person. So we want to remove the maximize box for one, because we don't need it. Same with minimize, just get rid of that. So then we need to find our settings somewhere. Form border style, we want to set it to fixed, fixed single. So fixed single means we can't make it bigger, we can't stretch it. So that's just an application by itself. Change the text as we would normally would. So a way we could extend it is to display how long you have left in the box. So again, just create a new, so we could create a new box at the, at the side here. So we, so we have number of clicks format center and then we also have um, time remaining like that so we can put our code in so every single tick our text box one time remaining so every single time the timer ticks, text box time rema remaining dot text equals our seconds dot to string. And again, we need to put this up here when we reset the game, it needs to reset to zero as well. But as you can see, when I run this code, it counts up. That's not what we want. So a way we can extend this is to create another variable up here and go um, length of time equals 10. So with this, we can declare, we can set this to declare the time how long it's going to take. So we want seconds is length of time. We can also do an equals after that. So if it's if seconds is bigger or equal to length of time, so that's 10 seconds. So if it's bigger or equal to 10 seconds, it'll stop the game, which is what we want. And again, 
within time remaining, we can go length of time minus seconds. So 10 minus, let's say you're five seconds in, 10 minus five equals five seconds remaining. 10 minus three seconds remaining is seven. So that'll be correct. And we know at the top when we reset the game, it will always just be length of time since you've reset it. So if you start the game, 10, nine, eight. And if I reset that, it goes to 10. It means that now we can just easily change one variable at the top and that changes how long you've got and it changes every line of code. So it doesn't mean you have to find every reference to that number in code. So th there we are. So that's our clicker game. Next episode, we'll be taking uh, this concept and expanding it even further. So we'll be making a cookie clicker clone um, in C Sharp. So it'll be a very basic version of it with not a lot of art, but um, that's what we'll be making. So tune in next episode and that's what we'll be making. So we'll be taking this game and extending it further. Thanks for watching. We'll let YouTube go and like and subscribe and I'll see you next episode.